Hallelujah to the King. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to the King. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. yes. Let's sing that little chorus. Hallelujah. And 
And he said, I'm trying to get them. They, 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 they're kind of hit and miss. I'm going to church. They live outside in, in the lower 48. And he said, they're kind of hit and miss and going to church. And so every time they call me, I, I'm pumping them full of all these scriptures. But I keep saying, you need to go to church. You need to get a church home. Then I said, brother, open up your app. And he did. I said, click on this week's message. And he did. I said, hit the send button. And it popped right up and he sent it to them. I said, tell them to listen to that until they get plugged in. He said, that's a good idea. And last week I was sharing with one of the brothers in church, if every Sunday you took the app out after church and sent that message to five people, how many people would have an opportunity to hear the message? Mm -hmm. Think about that. You have a tool in your hand that's really powerful, saints. We need to use it for the glory of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And if you ever miss a message, you can go to the app and listen to it. Amen. Or you can do like I do. I listen to the message each week. Well, why would you listen to it, Pastor? You preached it. Because I need to hear it too. I need, I need the word. I need what God is going to deposit into me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that I can deliver to you. Amen. Amen. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. I digress. Back to the page. <laughs> See, I write notes and still mess stuff up. Amen. Wow. Or maybe I just add two. I don't know. It's a lot of fun, though. Amen? Amen. If you're a first-time or returning guest, we invite you to text the word WELCOME to 907-274-1324. Connect with us electronically. I pray for you, your family. I intercede for you and ask God to bless you. Amen. Amen. Our prayer family this week is the Mayhew family. We're praying for Barry and Tisha Mayhew, asking God to bless. Amen. Amen. So, let's do our connection blessing. Today we're giving away a screwdriver with interchangeable bits. Mm -hmm. So we can get projects done. Amen. Because nice. this is Father's Day month, so we want fathers to mm -hmm. be blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in love. Amen. Bless you, Brother Lopez. Amen. What do you mean, God, when Amen. Did, did you see that? He got it, his wife grinned. That means there are honeydews at home. Amen. Uh, I like the way that works. Amen. Let's worship God with our tithes and offering. Let's give back into the Lord as he is blessed. Mm -hmm. You can't out give the Lord no matter what you do. For you'll find out in the end that the Lord's out giving you your silver and your gold. Your love and service too. Yes, you'll find out in the end that the Lord's out given you. Oh, you can't out give the Lord no matter what you do. For you'll find out in the end that the Lord's out given you. Your silver and your gold, your love and service too. Yes, you'll find out in the end that the Lord's out given you. Amen. 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 Would you pray for the gifts that give yourself and is not to give? Remember the main new family as you pray today. Amen. Lord Jesus, we love you. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for all you do. Lord, we just appreciate you. Ask you, Lord Jesus. To bless the uh, Maydu family, Lord. Bless them abundantly this week with salvations sure. and spiritual gifts, Lord. We just uh, want to send an extra special blessing to them. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to your house to give back to you. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to bless this offering. Bless those that could give and those that could not give. And we thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the King. Let's dismiss the junior church and their workers. What a wonderful opportunity to grow in the word today. Amen. Amen. And the rest of you youngins, let's dig into the word and grow a little bit. Amen. We're in John chapter 4 today. Open your Bibles. Stand with me. Let's read the holy word together. Amen. It's always good to bring your Bible to church. Always.
John chapter 4, we're going to begin at verse 1. Of Milwaukee, at least it's a good brand. Mm -hmm. Wow. You could have done. What favor we have yeah. in the Lord. John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then come he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Jacob. And Jacob's well. Yes. Oh, thank you. Let's read that one again. Then come he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Amen. Now, Joseph's well was there. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that to, in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall either in this mountain or yet at Jerusalem worship the Father ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Praise God. Let's read that last verse together, John 4, 26. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. John 4, 26. Minister Heikus, would you pray for the message and messenger today? Father, we just thank you for your presence yes, here today, Lord. Father God. We come to worship you, Lord yes, God. Lord. We wish to sit at your table, Father God, and partake of what you have for us, Father, in the Word. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your miracles. Thank you, in Lord. Advance, we already thank you that you've already done those things that we cannot see that are going to happen in our lives. So yes, Lord. Father, bless, bless the pastor from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. That double anointed portion, Father God. And as we sit at your table, let us just feast, Father God, and take it with us in our hearts. And as we make our way home, Father God, that we just love you more and more. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be seated, saints. Amen. God created us for his pleasure. Yes. Amen. If you think you were here for any other reason, think again. God created you to please 
Him. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So if we were created for God's pleasure, it would be important for us to know what pleases God. The most. What pleases God? When we receive salvation. And then in turn, help other people do the same. Amen. Amen. This is the third in the series, Changing Soils. The message today, Reach the Lost. If you are saved, you have a mission. Your mission is to reach people for the kingdom of God. Now I want you to know that the devil wants you to think that you cannot do this. Or that you're just unqualified. Or that it's a job reserved only for the pastor, church leadership. Or... When you've been a Christian long enough, then maybe you might be able to reach somebody for the Lord. Any of those things sound familiar? Yes. Saints, the devil's a liar. Yes. Note that everything that comes out of him is a lie. Amen. He only tells lies. Yes. Anything that he tells you is a lie, so the opposite is true. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So live in the truth, not the lie. Live in the blessing, not the despair. From the moment you are saved, you are equipped, you are able to reach other people and bring them to the Savior. Mm -hmm. An intentional conversation, guided by the Lord, has eternal consequences. Yes, An intentional conversation, guided by the Lord, has eternal consequences consequences. Throughout this message, we're going to be using a tool from the book Courageous Disciple Making by David Watson and Paul Watson. Intentional conversations. How do we as Christians strike up and continue in intentional conversations that will have eternal consequences? Number one, we begin with casual conversations. It says in John 4, 7, There cometh a woman to Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Here in chapter 4, Jesus has been preaching. There's some things stirring up amongst the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, about Jesus baptizing too many disciples. And the scripture clearly says, Although Jesus baptized none, but his disciples did the baptizing. Yes. What are they saying? Jesus was focused on the preaching, and in the other 12, there were so many people there needing to be baptized that they took to the baptizing. Amen. That means if you've got 12 people doing the baptizing, there's a lot of people needing to be baptized. Amen. Amen. What's going on? The message of Christianity, of salvation, of grace is growing exponentially. The Pharisees are getting upset about this. Things aren't going the way they planned. Who is this Jesus? They knew who he was. And so he leaves the revival and, and, and now they're, they're traveling down the road and they're going someplace. And they stop at a well. Well, he does. He sends them on to, to get some meat and do some shopping and things like that. And he sits on the well. Verse 7, Then cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. In the culture of Jesus' day, speaking to a woman with whom you were not related, or with whom you had no business dealings. That was not acceptable. That was just not something you did. Also in the culture of the day, the Jews did not interact with the Samaritans and the Samaritans with the Jews. Now I can get into all the nuts and bolts of that, but we don't need to, need to do that. It's just really simple. They didn't talk to each other. They didn't spend time with each other. Samaritans were over by themselves, way over here, and the Jews stayed far from them. In fact, you only went to Samaria if you had to. And even then you double check to make sure. And then you ask someone else to make sure they were sure that you were sure. Maybe you didn't have any business there anyway. Because <clears throat> there was certainly somewhere else you could go. Even if it was hundreds of miles out of your way. That could meet your need better than Samaria. Because that's how much the rift was here. And Jesus is sitting on the well. And here comes the woman. 
give me to drink. To reach people that no one else is reaching, you need to go places no one else is going. Amen. Let me say that again. To reach people no one else is reaching, you need to go places no one else is going. Isn't that a simple truth? But how are we going to reach the unchurched if we don't go to where the unchurched is? That doesn't mean you partake in their deeds or you spend all your time with them. But saints, you need to rub shoulders with them. You need to interact with them enough so that you can start up these casual conversations. Mm -hmm. To reach a lost person, Jesus is willing to reach across cultural divides mm -hmm. and start a conversation. Every conversation has a beginning, yes. and the casual or common is often the easiest to use. We've been in conversation today in much the same way. We talk about the weather. We ask someone where they're from. We ask about where they work or what they do or what's important to them or all kinds of different things. We start with these casual, unoffensive topics, and we strike up a conversation. But the conversation needs to go somewhere, saints. It needs to have a purpose. It is going to be a conversation that is going to make an impact. We don't just talk about the weather and walk away, and yet do we not do that? Do we not say, how are you doing today? Fine, and that's the end of our conversation. You say, well, I don't want it to go anywhere. Why are we talking? Well, I want to be polite. Politeness won't get anybody into heaven. That's right. Think about that a minute. But I don't want them to be offended at me. They were offended at my Savior. Man, I, I, I have to tell you, saints, I've, I've, I've started some conversations that I can tell within just about 30 seconds they're already upset. And I haven't even talked about anything important yet. <laughs> I was at one place one time, and, and there was a clerk on the other side of the counter from me. And I was checking stuff out, and, and I mean, we weren't even 30, 40 seconds into the conversation, and, and the Lord told me to ask her a very direct question about him. She turned red. She got angry. I'm not talking to you. Well, she clammed up. Lord told me to ask her again in love. I was in love the first time, and he told me to soften my countenance even more. The scripture says a soft answer turned up away wrath. That's right. And so I, so I reshaped the question, and I looked at her, and I asked it again. She didn't say a word. She reached over and hit that little button on her thing that makes the light flash, and she just stood there. She stopped bringing up my, my stuff and everything. And the manager came over. She said, I need to go on break. And she said, well, finish the helping the customer. No, I need to go right now. She said, are you, are you okay? Are you having an emergency? No, I need to go. And boy, she darted out of there. And the manager finished, and finished my thing, and she turned to me, and she said, uh, did something happen? And I said, oh, yeah. And so the Holy Ghost prompted me to ask her a question. She clammed up. The manager leaned over and said, Oh, I know she needs to be saved so bad. And I've been praying for her. I said, Well, now two of us are praying. I went back to that store four different times and never saw that clerk again. But you know what? The message was delivered. Saints, if we're just going to be casual and talk about the weather, what's the point of what we're doing? Now, not everything you do is going to end up like that, but I have to tell you that there are people that they have they have locked their hearts. Amen. They've Amen. slammed the door. they bolted it shut yes, because of hurts and pains on the inside. That's God right. is the only one that can heal and restore, Amen. and they're trying to keep him out. He's yes. the answer. Amen. 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 We have the answer. Yes, we do. Let's get it to them. Yes. We can't make them take him, but we can sure present him to them. Amen? Amen. Amen. To this day, I still pray for her. I don't know her name. I don't know anything about her other than that one event. But I know that when I told that manager that I would be praying and we would be agreeing, the Bible says we're two or three agree upon a thing, it shall be done. I'm claiming that lady for the kingdom of God Amen. to be saved. 
God didn't have me strike up a conversation to make her run off. He had me talk to her because she needed to hear that he is there for her. Amen. We need to learn to move from the casual to the next area, the meaningful. When the Samaritan woman questions Jesus as to why he is speaking with her, he moves immediately to a meaningful portion of the conversation without even addressing her question. Instead of spending his time explaining why he is speaking to her, which is what she said, why are you, a Jew, speaking to me who is a Samaritan, what? Red flag! What? No, no, no! In case you don't know, I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. We don't talk to each other. Just in case you didn't get the memo. In case your mama didn't raise you right. In case your daddy didn't teach you. We, we don't talk to each other. What gives? Hello? He doesn't spend any time on that. He just moves to the next part of the conversation. You know that sometimes when you start the casual conversation and it shifts over to the meaningful, people will try to shut it down. Yes, they will. Mm -hmm. You just keep on going, amen? Yeah, exactly. Number one, casual conversation. Number two, meaningful conversation. John 4, 9 through 11. They say, the woman of Samaria, and how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? Which of a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Mm -hmm. Man, that must have been a thing. Amen. Here's Jesus sitting on the well. The woman comes over. He says, Give me a drink. What are you doing talking to me? If you knew who was asking you the questions, you would have asked of him, give me to drink. And he would have given you living, living. water. Amen. Wow! Amen. Saints, do you know that Jesus is sitting on the well near you, near your family, near your friends, and he's offering living water? And how many of us ever ask of him, give me to drink? All right. Amen. We talk to him about culture. We talk to him about circumstances. We talk to him about our problems. We talk to him about all this stuff. And we don't ask him the most important question. <laughs> Give me living water. Give me living water. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Statements that bring people to the place where they will ask the question is meaningful. Statements that help people shift from their focus yes. Amen. to eternal truth is meaningful. Turning the focus toward the Word of God brings someone closer to the Savior. Not every single conversation you have has to be laced with verse after verse after verse of Scripture. Amen. But some conversations need a verse or two. Amen. Amen. Some need a simple prayer. But they all need to be wrapped up in an abundance of love. Amen. If the person you're speaking with is in in emotional or spiritual distress and you share with them genuine compassion that is very meaningful Amen. they may not respond the way you think but it's meaningful <laughs> mm -hmm. if a person is in need and you're able to help them meet the need that is meaningful <clears throat> what makes a conversation meaningful to you if someone is talking to you and all of a sudden it shifts from casual to meaningful, what is the thing over here that makes it meaningful that now you're, you're connected in this conversation? You want to talk more. Think about that when you're talking to other people. How do you relate to someone when a conversation is meaningful <clears throat> to you? Do you become more engaged? Do you listen better? Do you share more? A conversation with meaning is much easier to shift from the, from the meaningful into the spiritual. See, this is where we're going. We're going from the casual to the meaningful to the spiritual. I should do it the right way. We're going from the casual to the meaningful to the spiritual. That's how the boxes work on your paper. They go in a circle. Amen. You saw the little boxes, right? And once the conversation is meaningful, spiritual is right there. Isaiah 59, 1, two, one through 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. 
But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Isn't that interesting how God puts this? He tells us that he's listening and he can reach you. And then he says, but there's some things that happen that cause it so I can't hear you and I won't move on your behalf. What's that? Sin. Amen. Sin makes it so God's not listening. God's not moving. That's it. Wait, but verse 1 says, but, but the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. That's right. And that's how God is toward us until sin comes in. Amen. And the only thing that breaks that so God is listening again and moving again is repentance. Genuine repentance from the heart. Amen. All of us need to repent and we need to live in a realm, a lifestyle of repentance. Amen. We need to be humble before the Lord. Yes, we do. Number one, casual conversation. Number two, meaningful conversation. Number three, spiritual conversation. I think more Christians would witness more, except they have trouble with spiritual conversation. Mm -hmm. Except that spiritual conversation is easier than casual conversation. Because everything, if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, shifts into the spiritual. Everything. Did you know you can talk about mowing your lawn and end up talking about God? Amen. How is that possible? Because he said, as the grass Rises up and then it withers away under the sun. So is the life of a man. It is but a vapor. It's burned up in the heat. What? Yeah, you don't live very long. Not in God's eyes. In our eyes, we live forever. In God's eyes, really short. Did you know that the Bible talks about the flower of the grass? You know what the flower of the grass is? Dandelions. You know what you know about dandelions? Dandelions are tenacious. Tenacious. I mean, they will poke up through concrete. You can have this beautiful concrete, and here comes a dandelion right in the middle of it. How does it do that? Because they don't give up. And then they turn white and fluffy, and then there's dandelions everywhere. That's what dandelions do. You know, you should be like that in your, in your sharing of the gospel. You should push through the hardest of obstacles, and then you should reproduce for the kingdom of God. What would happen if we would reproduce for the kingdom of God? Wow. John 4, 4, 14 through 15. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither, to draw. They had a little casual conversation. It shifted over to meaningful conversation. And now Jesus immediately, <coughs> immediately turns it to the spiritual. Jesus is talking about eternal life. That spiritual living water. You know what the woman's talking about? Water from a well. Uh -huh. She says, this well, i got to come here and draw every single day. Where's this water that I can get and I won't have to draw anymore? Where's this water where I can stay home and do nothing now? Mm -hmm. That's what she's asking for. She doesn't mean it in a negative <coughs> way, but it's a lot of work to draw water. Yes, it is. And they, they don't go and get a bucket. Mm -hmm. They get buckets. It is not uncommon in a, in a community where there is only one well <coughs> that, that you, you make 10 or 12 or 15 trips to get the water that you need so that your family can live. And this quite often is the responsibility of the women in the house. Amen, that's right. we, we are spoiled that we can walk over and turn the knob. Yes, we are. Hello. Right. And thank the Lord we can turn the knob. Amen. Amen. I think sometimes we should give God a little more glory and praise for the blessings he gives us. Amen. Amen. I heard someone the other day, yeah, but i got to pay for my water bill. Praise the Lord you got water to get a bill for. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, hello. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is good. Oh. Saints, when these two people, Jesus and the woman, when they started to sink up, now the spiritual is being addressed. So here are two helpful questions for you. Has anyone ever prayed for you about that? That's a great way to shift to the spiritual. 
You see, you hear them talking about the burden. Has anyone prayed for you about that? Yes, that's a good one. Not, let me pray. Has anyone ever prayed for you about that? You're going to hear two things. They're either going to say no, or they say, yeah, nothing happened. Oh, well, let me pray. What's the difference? Well, I'm in communication with the Father, and he likes to answer prayer. I'm not special. He's special. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can also use, would you like me to pray for you about that? But that first one, has anyone ever prayed for you about that? Wow. You see, sometimes sharing about what God has done in your life, answers to prayer in your life, miracles for family members or friends, this is a great way to segue into the spiritual. Sharing a brief Bible passage where a prayer has been answered or a need has been met or a miracle has been done. This directs people back to the spiritual. It says in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You know what God's actually saying in that verse? Don't just ask me for what you think I'll do. Just ask me to do what I want to do. And I'll do something you've never seen before. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty kind of amazing thing that God says. Call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knewest not. No, it's not. No matter what you can think of, I can do better than that. That's the God we serve. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. No matter how far you have fallen away from God's grace, he will hear you if you repent. If you, repent. If you genuinely say, Father, forgive me, save me, restore me, he will hear your prayer. Amen. <coughs> 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should come to repentance. Number one, casual conversations. Number two, meaningful conversations. Number three, spiritual conversations. Number four, discovery conversations. What are discovery conversations? That's a glimpse of the Savior. That's a glimpse of the power of God. That's a glimpse that God is about to do something. And they discover that God is there for them. John 4, 16-19. Jesus saith unto her, She just said, Give me this water. Give me this water that I don't have to draw anymore. What does Jesus say? Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. You want living water? Go get your husband. Now, you do know living water is a one-on-one -on -one thing. What is Jesus doing? He's doing what he always does. He's getting down to the root of the problem. Why is he telling her to go get her husband? Because God is not going to answer her prayer until sin is dealt with. And he knows there's sin here. What do you mean there's sin here? They're not married. That's right. Oh, you mean shacking up's not good? It wasn't for Jesus. No. Say amen or oh me. Amen. Let me make it plain so you don't miss it. Sex outside of marriage is sin. It's sin. Say amen. amen. And sex with somebody who is not your spouse is sin. Say amen. amen. Oh, I thought we could have as many as we want. No, that's not what the book says. They did in the Old Testament. They messed up. Mm -hmm. You know how many problems David had because of many wives? Oh, my goodness. I'm not even going to talk about Solomon, and he was a wise man. In fact, the wisest to ever be, and he was sure dumb when it came to sleeping around. You say, oh, he made peace with his, with his neighbors. No. 
It just pushed the problem away. All right, preacher. Ah, how did I get on this? Oh, yes, verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman said and they answered and said, I have no husband. You see, she's face to face with Jesus. All right. She's face to face with Jesus. Mm -hmm. She knew that the question he was asking, she couldn't do. There was no way she could hide it. I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. Meaning, yep, you're telling me the truth. For thou hast had five husbands. Five husbands. And he who thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. He's saying you've been married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced. Now you're shacked up because you're not willing to get married. How many times do I hear people say to me, well, pastor, I get married, but I did that once and it failed. Huh. That's like saying God can't forgive and cleanse and renew and make better. Right now it's too hard for God. Stop basing what you're doing on what the world's doing. And do it based on what God said to do. But I'm not ready to get married. Then you got no business hitting the sack. Ah, how did I get on this this morning? This is not even easy. If I took the page off, same, same, same. It's not there. Wow, man. Wow. Man, there's a lot of things done. We need it. Because it doesn't matter if we're talking about adultery yes. or lying we need it. or fornication or lasciviousness we need or murder it. or deceit or debate. I mean, the list is huge. It doesn't matter what the sin is. If it's in our life, it keeps us from getting living water. All right. Amen. And Jesus knows about those little hidden sins. Yes, he does. Amen. Psalm 34 talks about all these wonderful things about the Word of God. It's holiness. It's sweet like honey. It's blessing. And then it says, but there's presumptuous sin. Presumptuous. All in the same chapter. Amen. God doesn't want presumptuous sin. Right. He wants it under the blood. Amen? Amen. Allow the person you're speaking with to discover the Lord. This woman turns and shifts the conversation to worship. She knows that there's something different about this guy, and now she's talking about worship. I mean, she's, she's starting to feel a little spiritual. I mean, almost like maybe a hallelujah is about to pop up. Hello. You know, there's a lot of people in the world. They'll, they'll give you a verse and give you a hallelujah and give you whatever they need to make, to make sure you just leave alone about that topic of sin. Except that her question is sincere. She's been in bondage because of this issue. Yes. And then she makes an interesting statement. She says, but I know Messiah is coming. I know Messiah is coming. Yes. How many of you know that Messiah is coming? Yes. She's talking about the first coming. We're looking toward the second coming mm -hmm. and the rapture of the church, which is before that. Do you know there are people that know that Jesus is coming back and still live in their sin? Man, that hurts me. Makes me makes me ache all over. They know the truth, but sin is more important than righteousness. Wow. Amen. And when Jesus hears this woman say Messiah is coming, he reveals himself. You know, the conversation you have with people, it can take many directions. You need to speak truth. And you need to reveal the Savior. But you need to let them do the discovery. Brother, imagine I invite you over to my house and, 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 and fix this beautiful steak dinner. And I told you how good it was and the spices I used and how I cooked it and, and marinated it and everything. And you can smell it and you can't wait. And I reached over and picked up your plate and ate your steak in front of you. What good would it be for me to tell them about him, how good it is, but not let him discover the blessings of it? Do you know, sometimes we do that in our conversation. We talk about all this stuff, we bring them right into the place, but we don't let them discover Jesus. We need to let them discover Jesus, experience Jesus, fellowship with Jesus, amen. Commune with Jesus. 
James, our goal is not to save them. Wait a second, Pastor. I thought that was the goal. No. The goal is to bring them to the Savior. Amen. You can't save anybody. I can't save anybody. But I can sure take them to an old rugged cross. Amen. I can sure take them to, a, to, to the Savior who died for them. Amen. Shed his blood for them. Is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for them. Wanting them to repent of their sin. Everybody needs salvation. Amen. Everybody needs repentance. Everybody needs to pray to the Father. Everybody. Discovering the Savior is about the opportunity to have your sins washed away and your heart and life changed forever. Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Amen. Even this Samaritan woman who, by the, the culture of the day and the standpoint of the Jews, was considered an outcast so deplorable, there was no hope for her. But that's not what the Savior thought. Saints, don't let the stigma of the world keep you from having casual, meaningful, spiritual, and discovery conversations. Take the time to spend time one-on-one -on -one so people encounter Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. I want you to see the end of the story really quick. At the beginning of the message, I said to you, from the moment you were saved, God equips you to share the message. The devil gives you all the reasons why you can't, but God has already equipped you. But this woman, after speaking with Jesus, having this spiritual connection, and discovering who he is, goes all the way back to the village and tells everybody, you need to come meet who I've just met. You need to come meet the man who told me everything that I need to know. Jesus reached out to the woman, and the woman reached out to her village. Her entire village. That's pretty good for a brand new convert in Christ. Amen? John 4, 28-30, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Remember the culture? The men don't talk to the women. The women don't talk to the men unless you are related or have business. What better business do you have than saving grace? Amen. Come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Wow. Amen. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. She goes back and says, Hey, you need to come meet this guy that told me everything. They stop what they're doing, don't mean him, and when they talk to him, they say, will you stay and teach us? And revival kicks up in Samaria. That's God's saving grace. Every nation, people, kindred, and tongue. Every nation, people, kindred, and tongue. There'll be a representative in heaven. There's people from that city in Samaria that will be in heaven. Amen. Wow. Wow. I want to close with our key verse. John 4, 26. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Amen. Saints, let them discover Jesus. Mm -hmm. They'll never be the same. Look what the Lord has done. Well, now look what the Lord has done.